Thank you, Nina, for the invitation and for the introductions. So today I will talk about the singularity problem in random combinatorial matrices. And hello, everyone. So uh, the theory of random matrices is a, a rich topic in mathematics and besides being interested in it all right, it has many, it displays a fundamental role in uh, other areas, such as CS and uh, statistics and combinatorics. And one of the, perhaps the, the most basic question in the theory of random matrices is, uh, is a singularity probability problem. And the most studied model of, of combinatorial random matrix is perhaps the, the Bernoulli matrix. So let me uh, maybe reconcile the, the definition of a Bernoulli random matrix. So I will denote by MN a random matrix of sign N by N. So it has N rows and N columns. And the entries are IID had a marker random variable. So it takes value plus one and minus one with the same probability on half. And importantly, the, the entries are independent. And for convenience, I will let PM to be the singularity probability of this random matrix. So this quantity depends on, on M. A very simple observation is that Pn is at least two to the minus n, because two to the minus n is a probability that the first two rows of uh, Mn are equal. So if you fix the, the first row, then there, there, there is only one choice for the second row, and it is taken uniformly from uh, from a set of two to the n element. So trivially, Pn is at least two to the minus n. And, and it is widely believed that Pn, so the, this simple lower bound is, is asymptotically tight. So, it will conjecture that Pn is, uh, is half, half to the n, half to the, the error term, which tends to zero as n goes to infinity. And the common belief, so these conjectures come from the common belief that the, the, the main reason for the singularity of a random matrix is the dependency between a, a few rows and columns. So this quantity should come from the probability that few rows or columns are linearly independent. I tell you, this is the case if the first two rows are equal. And using this, uh, this belief, we can even make a, a more precise conjecture on the on Pn. But that's not what I'm gonna to do today. So I, maybe I will give you a some brief history about this, so about the progress on this problem. So it is already non-trivial to, to prove that Pn approaches zero as n goes to infinity. And this was first done by Comlos in uh, city sevens. And shortly after that, he, he managed to, to get a quantitative, quantitative upper bound Pn, which is of order one over root n. And the first exponential upper bound on Pn was obtained by Kant, Comlot, and Samaradi 
in 95, the Kruger's PM is a small 0.999 to the n. So as you can see that this number is, is smaller than one. So tau and vu simplify uh, can convert in some way the argument to get a slightly better bound 0.95 f to the n. By, com by combining the, the argument of uh, Kant Kolmlostomedy together with some additional, with the idea of the inverse theorem in, uh, in little good offer theory, they get the, the improve the bound further to uh, three quarter to the end. So three quarter is 0 0.75, which uh, is smaller than 0 0.9. And with additional trees, we can and root improve the upper bound further to uh, one over square root of two. And I think if you use a calculator, then you will immediately see that this one over square root of two is smaller than three quarter. And in another direction, relation and fashion in reprove the exponential upper bound, reprove this, this upper bound in a stronger form. So they prove that uh, they, they give a quantitative upper bound on the, on the smallest singular value of the, of the random matrix MM. So in particular, it implies can come low summarily without so I, I will not state now that is our precise. And remarkably, in a, in 2018, Pico Miro managed to to solve the conjecture. So he proved that P n is indeed a half to to the n, up to the error term. So. Uh, I think this year there, there was an announcement or there was a, a preprint in, in archive which claimed that they, they, they get a, an asymptotic formula for PM. So it is something like M choose two times half to the M. So not only that, they get the, the base of the, right, they, they also get the, the smaller auditor. Uh, so Mat <coughs> MATLAB is known for random matrices with uh, dependence and cheese. And maybe the, the most studied model of a uh, random matrix with, uh, in the, with dependent and cheese is a uh, random symmetric matrix. So here we have NN symmetry is a random symmetry matrix of psi N by N. Again, it is a square matrix of psi N. And the upper triangular entries are IAD had a marker random variables. And uh, we denote by PM symmetry to be the singularity probability. So, motivated by the previous conjecture, we can also conjecture that PM symmetry is also half to the n. And this comes from the probability that the first two rows of the matrix are equal. That probability is, is roughly half to the end. <clears throat> um, Tuan, Yuji has a question. Yuji, mm -hmm. do you want to unmute and ask a question? It's not a question, it's a comment on that archive paper. Mm -hmm. I think Asaf 
Farber, who works on this topic, told me that the proof was incorrect in this archive paper that you mentioned. I see. So yeah, I, I did. Uh, thank, thank you for the comments. I, I didn't go through the preprint, so I. I didn't go through either. I just asked somebody who tried to look at it. So it, it's incorrect. I mean, the conjecture yeah, is still... Of course, it's totally different from what I have seen before. Yeah. Thank you. So about the, the symmetric model, so the, the conjecture is that it is, again, half to the end, half to the, the error term. And the... The first upper bound on, uh, on these quantities was obtained by Costello, Tao, and Vu in 2006. They get an upper bound of n to the minus a quarter. So this is an upper bound on, on the singularity probability of the random symmetries, internally matrix. And this was improved to n to the minus a half by Costello and then to the end. So we improve that. This singularity probability decays faster than any polynomial. So for any const constant c bigger than zero, there exists and not big enough so that the singularity probability is smaller than n to the minus c for every n bigger than n naught. And fashioning improve this to uh, to an exponential type upper bound, so he got e to the minus n to c, where c is a, a small constant. Perhaps it can be something like zero point zero zero one. So c is a small constant. And Faber and James improve this to. Uh, Prove that the exponent C can be taken to be a quarter. And then more recently, Campos, Matos, Maurice, and Morrison get an upper bound of uh, so get C to be a, a half. And this seems to be the, the limit of the current method. And I don't have anything to, to add to, to this story. So the main focus of this talk will be a, a different model of, of random matrices with a dependent entry. So the model of random matrices which I consider is the is a so-called rogue regular random matrix. So QN is a random zero on matrix. So the entries of the matrix are either zero or one. And E is of sign N by N, of course. And the rows of the matrix are independent vectors of exactly N over two zeros. So each rows of the matrix QN is drawn uniformly random from from the from the set of a zero one string of link n with exactly n over two zeros and n over two ones. So here I ignore the parity of, of m. So the parity of m is not important. So you can replace n over two by by any number which is linearly on, on m. Then everything I I I will say is tier two. So QM is a singularity probability of this random matrix. And we are interested in getting a good upper bound on QM. Because the, the lower bound again is, is at least two to the minus M. Because, so this comes from the probability that the first two rows are equal. If we fix the, the first row, then we have only one choice for the second row. 
and it is taken uniformly from a, from a set of sign n choose n half because there is exactly n choose n half uh, chain of linked n with exactly n over 2 1 and n over 2 0. So the low bar for qn is again 2 to the minus n. But here you can use a Stirling formula to And we can conjecture that uh, this is uh, a good up, a good lower bar. So QN should be half to the N. And he, he using the inverse little good of thought theorem, he, he proved that QN decays faster than any polynomial. And uh, last year, Faber, Zen, Lu, and Samuti got the first exponential type upper bound on, on QN. So 2 to the minus n to the 0, 1. And what we really want is to improve 0 0.1 to, to 1 to get the, the exponential upper bound. And uh, maybe last month I, I managed to, to prove the first exponential upper bound on, on this singularity probability. So I get something like 0 0.999 to, to the end. Maybe some number a little bit smaller, the base maybe a little bit smaller than this number, but it, it doesn't matter. So the point here is that the, the, the by of the exponent is, the base is smaller than one. So for the rest of the talk, I will give you some, some ideas of the, some flavor of, of the proof. So for this, I need a couple of, uh, of simple definitions. So V is a real vector of size M. And I, we consider the following random sum. FV is a sum of eta I, V I. I from one up to M. And the eta I is taken uniformly from uh, zero on string of link N subject to the conditions of the sum of eta i is n half. So the vector eta i is drawn uniformly at random from, from, from this set. So, so this uh, random variable will be is related to, to our problems because if you multiply the, the rows of the, the single rows of the random matrix with a, a vector, then what you get is, is this random variable. And I will define P of V to be the, the maximum of all real number A such that SV equals A. So it is a maximum item probability. So it is the definition of PV clear? Okay, very good. And the, the following anti-concentration estimates was useful for, I have some application in, in random matrices. So again, V is the vector, a real vector of length N. And we have the assumption that VI minus VJ is non-zero for quadratically many pairs I and J. 
then the item probability is bounded from the above by one over square root of n. So this is an analog of little root of four adult uh, theorem. So to, to give you an idea of the of the proof, I will maybe scale the proof of the the fact that QM is little out of one using the previous pro propositions. So remember that the rows of QN are independent, right? So we can therefore we can build QM by adding one random row at a time. So, so until we get exactly n rows, then we are done. And I do with that, oh, actually we, we can prove that. The first n minus rows are independent with high probability. And, it, and therefore it forms a hyperplane with normal vector v. So V is, is an unit vector which is orthogonal to the span of the first n minus one rows. So if we so if we condition it on the the first n minus one rows, then uh, more or less QN will be the probability that random it's about us from above by this item probability why is that because remember that a matrix qn is, is singular if only if we can find an unique vector v such that qn times v is is a zero vector and qn times v is zero if only if v is orthogonal to the first n minus one rows and E is also orthogonal to the, to the last row. So V must be the, the unique normal vector of the vector space spanned by the first n minus one rows. And the last condition will give an upper bound on QN. So if we condition this on the first n minus one rows, then V is is the deterministic vector. So if we can prove that, what are basically many pair I they give satisfy that V i minus V they are non-zero, then by the previous propositions, with this combined with this conditioning argument, we get this upper bound. So here I, I mean that we, if the issue with high probability, then we first conditioning on the first and minus on those and then apply this argument. We get an upper bound of zero on, little over one. And uh, Tuan, what about the assumption that the first and minus one rows are independent? Uh, is this something that's very easy to justify or are you just asking us to believe this for the moment? Yeah, it's just asking you to believe that this is not difficult to, to prove. Okay. But for the sake of, pre, uh, of presentation, I, I will ignore this and just admit this fact that the first and minus one rows are independent with high probability. This, of course, would be easier than proving that QM is little of one. And uh, so here, here we only get an, so actually by the previous argument, we can get an upper bound of uh, one over square root of n easily. But what we really want is, is to get an exponential is upper bound so we have to go beyond this estimate. And 
and in order to to get a, a stronger quantity path on on the singularity probability the following phenomenon is quite useful so it says that and actually this phenomenon is suggested by the the previous proposition so it says that if the item probability is is relatively large so i will not quantify what this means but but these conditions should imply that the, the different vectors vi minus vj must have a strong additive structure so this is intuitively obvious because if the if this probability is big then uh, then this random sum at zero with many choices of the eta so many random sum many sum are equal so it just implies that uh, the the coefficient vector should process a strong additive structure so to quantify this we need the i guess i introduce the, the so-called combinatorial list common denominator so dv is just the, the different vector so it can its coordinate is vi minus vj for every i different from from z so this is a vector of linked m choose two because we have uh, m choose two pairs i and z so so v is a it's a given vector real vector of link n then the combination not combinatorial least common denominator of, of v so for the moment just ignore these two parameters is that the is the smallest theta such so that the theta dilations of a of the different vector is well approximated by by integer vectors so the distance from this vector to the to, in, to the set of integral vector is, is small is quantified by 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 the right hand side And the key point is that we can we can show that the anti concentration of the random variable, random sum S V is controlled by the C L C D of, of V. So so the statement is quite a little bit technical. So it's probably says that so. So here we prove that the, the item probability is bounded by one over CLCD plus uh, plus an exponentially small term. And these technical conditions is certified for a typical vector V, for a typical unit vector. So you don't have to worry about these conditions. Hi, so would you mind going back to the, the definition of D of V just for a second? Um, so D of V is that a different vector consisting of VI minus VZ. Okay. Yeah. And uh, can you repeat then what, uh, what you're measuring with the CLCD? So it's the infimum. So this depends. So there are two parameters, mu and gamma, with some small number between zero and one. And this infimum over theta bigger than zero, such that the theta dilation of the different vector dv is 
approximated by, by an integral vector. In the sense that the distance to the, from this dilation to the set of integral vector is small, is smaller than uh, the right hand side. Thanks. So for example, this term forced us to consider only non-trivial approximation of, uh, of the dilation because gamma is strictly smaller than one, strictly smaller than the length of, of this vector. And the second term for us to uh, first, most of the coordinate of the dilation is, is close to an integer. And the, so the, the crucial estimate is, uh, is this, this statement, is this estimate. So it shows that the, the anti concentration the item probability of, of SV is governed by the CLCD of, of V. So let's forget about, about this. So it's that say that the item probability is bounded by one over CLCD. Last, uh, an exponentially small term. So if we can prove that the CLCD of, uh, of, uh, of the normal vector is exponentially small than the argument which I described will give an exponentially small upper bound on the singularity probability. And uh, this, in this case, we can prove that the, the normal, uh, so the unit normal vector of the random hyperplane generated by the first n minus one row has exponentially large CLCD. So if uh, V is, so if S is the uh, unit normal vector of the hyperplane spanned by the first n minus one goes, then with probably with very high probability. So this allows us to use the conditioning argument because the error term here is exponentially small. And with this very high probability, the CLCD of X is, uh, is exponentially large. So here, if, if we return to the previous slide, then it would imply that the item, so P of the random normal unit vector is exponentially small. And this immediately gives you the exponential, exponential upper bound on the singularity probability using the conditioning argument. So maybe we, I guess, so there is a, so there is a sketch of the proof of the anti-concentration in quality. So let me uh, close the talk with an open problem. So we believe that the, the tool which we have developed, we have uh, other applications in the problem, which is this theory. And one possibility, possibility for Further the research is the following model of random matrix. So we have AI is a deterministic matrix of size n by n. So this matrix is given and it satisfies the following condition. So the sum of the AI is zero and the sum of the square of AI is n square. 
moreover the maximum of the AIJ is is big O of one bounded from above by a constant. And IN is a random matrix obtained from the this deterministic matrix by applying a, a random permutation to the to the pair of indices. So I n is I sigma i j where sigma is uh, uniformly random permutation of the of the indices. So this random matrix has the property that the rows have the same distributions, but the, the rows are are dependent and also the columns are independent are dependent. So this is a model of a of matrix with uh, dependent entries. So in order to prove the circular law for, for this random matrix, the guys prove that the singularity probability of I n is is at most one over square root of n. Actually, they prove this uh, for uh, for the shift of of I n, and they conjecture that we should have an exponentially upper bar on the singularity probability. So we should be able to improve one over square root of n to uh, e to minus c n for some constant c. So uh, are there any questions about the, about this uh, model or the, or the conjecture? Or maybe let me mention one more application. So uh, this man, uh, Zen Cha and Shani, is the tool which I have developed to to prove that the singularity probability of another model of random matrix is exponentially small, and the the model they consider is is a little bit more natural than the one which I, I studied. So they require that. So again, the A is n by n, zero one random matrix. And uh, they require that the, the row sum and the column sum are uh, n half. So the sum of the n sheets in each row is exactly n half and the sum of the n sheet in each column is exactly n half. So this matrix corresponds to, uh, to the adjacency matrix of uh, maybe a random bypass diagram. And they prove that for such model, we, the singularity probability is exponentially small. using uh, the tool which I have developed together with an, a new switching argument to, to handle the dependency between the rows. Because in this new model, the rows are no longer independent. Because we require that the, the sum of the entry in each column is n half. So the rows are no longer independent. And to handle that, they, they, they use uh, the new switching argument. And that's uh, everything I want to say today. And thank you for watching. <laughs>
Can you maybe briefly say what's the difference from your approach to the early approach by Asaf Oitek? And I think it was Vishesh and Kyle. So, one of the proof I know is a similar framework. One of the proof is a is a I remember the name. So it is the essence anti-concentration inequality. So it's that's inequality, but the the item probabilities in terms of the characteristic functions of the of the random variable. Mm -hmm. And our approach is similar in spirit to the approach of uh, of Rudersen and Cassini. They introduce the least common denominator. That's because in our model, the, 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 the entries in each growth is no longer independent. So we have to come up with a, with a, with a combinatorial least common denominator to handle the dependency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for a very nice talk. And I, I do like that uh, concentration inequality. So um, can you maybe briefly say something about the ideas and the proof of this um, CLCD inequality? In particular, does it, um, is it related to these earlier breakthroughs in ran random matrix theory? Because they all consider some kind of inverse little wood offered problems. Okay, so, so yeah, what are the shared ideas and, and the, so the application? Prepare. Yeah, just some another slide. Quick. I will go through it briefly not go, not mention any on the details. So we have the random variable SV, random sum SV. And we want to estimate the item probability of, of SV. We want to, to get an exponential. We want to bar PV in terms of CLCD. And I, as I said, the, the essence inequality allows us to, to bow the item probability in terms of the characteristic function of, of, the, of the random variable, SV. So we have this upper bound. So for example, fashion in and uh, Rurison also is, is this approach. So here, if, if the if the eta i's are independent, then the characteristic function is that the product of the characteristic functions. And we can bow the, the right hand side individually. But now in our model, the, the vector, the, the coordinate of eta is independent, right? sum of the eta i is is n half, so it become harder to, to, to estimate the right hand side. And so the key news estimate is, is, is this upper bound on, on the characteristic function. So my proof for, for this upper bound is maybe seven pages long. So it, I would love to see a, a short proof for, for this, uh, this upper bar. Uh, hi, this is really great work. I was wondering, in, in your model where you have independent rows with a particular uh, number of ones, <coughs> excuse me, you said that the same argument works when any constant fraction of the, the columns are one, right. what happens if the, the fraction is decreasing? So I think it will allow us to... So if the sum of the entry in each column is, is D, then the arguments here with still give some meaningful upper bound for the singularity probability for, for smaller d, d maybe, maybe n to the 
point nine or something. I, I didn't I didn't check. Okay. I suppose one thing that goes wrong, you can correct me on that, is this first n minus one vector. So if these first n minus one vectors have many zeros, then maybe the normal will not be so unstructured. All right. So I guess a, a key question there is how sparse can you make it and still prove that the probability goes to zero? The thing is, if the row sum is uh, maybe at least three, then the similarity probability is the little all of one. But I don't know if my argument will give that. Hmm. Maybe that case has well, a graph theory maybe argument. It's, maybe it's going to be four because it's good that for the for the more complicated models. So maybe it's good now. So maybe it's each choose is now that if the 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 row sum is D and D is only three then the singularity probability is otherwise zero one. Because D is LSO, it's not N minus three. Right? 